Then we need to talk about the the most amazing and the most confusing and the most worrying and the most scary and the most hype performance at Rolling Loud. We have to talk about this. We have to talk about it. So you know what I'm talking about. My guy, Playboy Carty. Oh my God. So Playboy Carty performed at Rolling Loud. Um, obviously, you know, as a Playboy Carty fan and stan, we haven't really got much information about any new album. And I think obviously common sense would dictate that it was because of that domestic violence dispute arresting that got happened the story goes that some kid on the playboy carty reddit randomly was just i don't know on the internet checking fucking police records and typed in playboy carty's government name and then popped up you know some um note that he hadn't been arrested recently i think it was in like december i think it happened recently so maybe a couple of months ago and it was for uh, allegedly assaulting his girlfriend who no one knows who she is some like girl he's kind of kept you know uh, under wraps and at the time she was pregnant i'm not sure if she still is or whatnot but he basically assaulted her and he got booked for it. And I think he got obviously put out on bail, but it happened. And then obviously that news went viral and it happened around the same time that Carty was teasing a new album. I think he went back on social media. There was a few posts of people in, in and amongst him and around him and stuff. A few of these people, a few of these people within his camp were doing interviews, you know, Joy Divisions, the other dude with the, um, with the bald head that wears lots of Rick Owens and Balenciaga. All those guys were kind of popping out. So it felt like there was something in the water. Okay. There's a new album, a new coming, new album, new album album but we it went completely radio silent when obviously you know people find out that he's out here beat allegedly beating pregnant women behind the scenes right which is which is absolutely get hilarious especially if you um if you're a fan of the track flipping r.i.p on die lit right i'm gonna sub that bitch da, 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 da. anyway cool so um that happened we haven't got much information rolling loud obviously he booked him ages ago and again no information about his flipping performance but then he did end up performing and again so much confusion because it went so crazy on the on the the performance they had to cut it short so it wasn't the full set multiple times it had to be stopped because the crowd were getting too unruly and of course it's not his fault it's the rolling loud flipping crowd management and shit probably let too many people in probably oversold tickets probably kids jumped over the gates stand this thing and it was heaving you can see from the videos if you watch it no one was moving i think that's always a good sign especially if it's a really big artist when you just see loads of gridlock and people just swaying from left to right it's usually a sign that they can't move there's no space clearly something is happening clearly something is going wrong and um it was quite scary i'm not gonna lie to see that happening i was like oh my god from video thinking damn man is this gonna be like another is this gonna be like another flipping um what you call it another travis scott astro world situation and luckily luckily it wasn't luckily it wasn't they stopped it when they could so big up rolling loud even though they you know they facilitate the problem they did try to fix it they paused it a few times i think it calmed the crowd down and then i think whoever's in charge made the executive decision just to kind of end the set and i think in general when you're rolling loud are really good at that because i think no i don't think but you can see they clearly give their artist a specific set like time and if you come late Whatever time you have left is what you have left. They don't extend time, don't do anything. Like it's all it's run like a military operation, rolling loud. So I think that kind of helps. So they can make these kind of executive kind of, you know, cold decisions without being like, oh my god, but it's Carty and he hardly performs. Anyway, he ended up performing. It was pretty good in some parts. The other parts I'm not really too fond of. It's just him screaming on the microphone. Um, uh, you know, as a fan of his and uh, lo loving the punk rock aesthetic and just being a fan of, fan of punk rock myself, I still think there's something to be said for hearing an artist actually rapping and singing their songs, hearing them breathe, hearing them losing their breath, hearing them missing or forgetting their lyrics. That's part of the fun of a live performance or even improvising, you know, during a track and, and mess, mixing up words or updating in the words that's kind of fun but for every reason this generation of hip-hop artists they don't like doing it they just play the mp3 in the background and just lower the flipping highs and the mids or whatever it may be and then just rap over it so you're hearing double double voices speaking on a speaker it's really odd performance wise or what the kids and opium look like they do they just play the tracks super loud and then they basically act like a like a DJ in, in, in effect, like kind of like a DJ or hype man, like basically, yeah, put your hands up, put your hands up while the track is going. They might scream the l lyrics of the chorus, but that would be it. Uh, and I think Playboy Kai, as good as his performances are, because I like the whole aesthetic behind it, loads of smoke, um, kind of, you know, this kind of, it kind of, kind of uh, hides himself behind it. It kind of reminds me of early days of flipping the weekend when you would never like people seeing his face and you just perform, you know, on stage with no lights on him or no spotlights. I like all that, loads of the smoke and stuff. But I do think regarding Playboy Carty, there's not enough lyrics in his raps. He doesn't rap a lot. 
in the first place. If that's the case, you have to flip and rap. You have to kind of rap the words. Don't just be sitting there screaming and whatever it may be. I know it's still hype and it still adds to it, but I think his performances would go another level if he absolutely rapped every single word of his tracks. Please rap them. But anyway, that aside, he played an updated live version of Location. One of my favourite tracks, one of my favourite tracks from his self-titled album, right? It's legitimately a masterpiece. And this updated version, I'm going to play for you. Oh my God. So strap in tight and listen to this. Playboy Kai location um, from Rolling Loud. It's absolutely stupendous. I love you guys so fucking much. We don't have the police, the fire marshal, everyone, you know. But as always, the most important thing is about you guys' safety. And I'm sorry. And I love you guys so much. But I have to leave. One more song. Was on that guitar, wow, 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 wow. Honestly, special, special, special. If you haven't seen it already, check it out yourself. Type it in, Playboy Carty Location. It's on this channel called RGC, but I'm sure other people have edits of it done. Legitimately, legitimately, one of the best performances I've seen in a while. And that live rendition of it was incredible. And imagine if he just would have rapped on it like normal like actually without the vocals in the background and just blitz it. It would have sounded incredible. It kind of reminds me of that live performance of from Flipping, what's his face? From DMX. I think from, uh, was it from? It was it Glastonbury or something? That epic performance on DMX of Glastonbury. And you could hear him in between the lyrics. Like, do you know what I mean? Like breathing and shit as he's rapping his bars and the crowd swaying from left to right. That's what live performances are about. Like it kind of, and also like I think of, you know, cause I'm a bit maybe spoiled a little bit cause I got into maybe watching live performances or live music, not from hip hop. Like I listen to most of my hip hop from my headphones at home and shit, or maybe when I go to the club. But when I go out, most of the things I'm listening to are like, you know, indie music or bands or alternative acts. And usually for the most part, I don't think I've ever heard an alternative or an indie band or something I've gone to see, or even a metal band. I've not seen any live metal band show where they play the MP3 in the background with the vocals. They never do that. It's like criminal to do that. Um, so they always just play the instrumental or just kind of, you know, play the whole thing, you know, via the live band. And you get to hear the live rendition of it. And sometimes it's a better version of it live than it is actually on the on the album sometimes. It can kind of spoil it for you sometimes. You hear a band play an album cut or play through a whole, a whole album that's due to be released. And then you hear the actual thing, the studio version, you're like, oh, I like prefer the live version. Um, so you can kind of flip it in that way. But also the live show can also make you a fan of the person's work. But I remember distinctly one of the people that kind of is recent years who I love to see live was Mac DeMarco. 
because Mac DeMarco, Mac DeMarco was always known to kind of flip songs live. Like he'd kind of stretch out a certain bit. He'd do some live improv funny thing on stage. He'd strip naked. He'd crowd surf. Or he'd just kind of add words to it. He'll run the chorus three or four times again just to kind of make it interesting. And that kind of added to the show. So fans or people that went to see Mac DeMarco would look forward to it. Like, oh, I can't wait to see Mac DeMarco perform because I don't know what version of um, salad days I'm going to get when I see him. It's going to be this one, this, you know what I mean? You don't know how he's going to flip it. And I really like that. But I think well, for whatever reason, these young kids, they don't seem to care about that. They just seem to care about getting lit, getting turned and whatnot, and just doing kind of the bare minimum for the most part.